President Biden signing those three executive orders on immigration this week, all of them designed to undo the Trump administration's efforts to secure our borders. Now, the orders are focused on establishing a family reunification task force, evaluating Obama-era legal immigration policies, and reviewing Trump's immigration plans. Now, the goal is integration and inclusion. Border security, though, apparently is not a priority. And with us now to talk more about this is the former acting Homeland Security Secretary, Chad Wolf. Chad is now a visiting fellow at the Heritage Foundation. Chad, great to see you. Oh, thanks for having me. So uh, inclusion, that's really the priority here of the Biden administration. How does that keep our borders secure and how does that help America's homeland security? Sorry, uh, you, you cut out. Can you repeat that question? Sure. And it's, it's not it's probably a difficult question to understand. But, you know, terms like inclusion, what, what does that mean when it comes to border security? Well, I think the uh, the executive orders that uh, the president signed yesterday, and of course the ones from earlier uh, on his first day uh, in office, are concerning on a number of fronts. Um, they're concerning because they uh, make it more difficult to remove individuals, to deport individuals. They make it more. Uh, they take down a lot of the asylum reforms uh, that we had put in place over the last several years. Uh, and they, of course, make the border itself less secure as he ends some of that border wall construction. So I think you need to take a look at and we need to continue to take a look at what all of these orders do in the aggregate as you put them all together. And of course, MPP or the Remain in Mexico program that they have halted as well. There's a number of things here that are, are concerning because it sends a signal to those that want to cross that border illegally. If you're able to do that, and you're able to stay here free of deportations, free of removals, uh, and you'll get a number of benefits. So all in all, it's a very concerning uh, set of actions that they've taken. Obviously, the family reunification aspect of this gets a lot of coverage. But what you just talked about in terms of a deterrent for illegal immigrants uh, in the Remain in Mexico program, it's hard to overstate that. And that was clearly one of the successful parts of the Trump administration's uh, border security policies. Why do you think the Biden administration, knowing that this was successful in deterring people from coming to this country was so, uh, you know, intent on getting rid of it? Well, there's certainly been a strong push by a number of folks on their side of the aisle, as well as in the advocacy community, about not liking the program. And they don't like it for the simple reason is that it brings some integrity back to the system. Their idea is to make sure that these individuals get into the country, they are then released while they're waiting for their immigration uh, hearing or proceedings, which takes several years. And during that time period, obviously, they're able to work. Uh, and then we know, based on data, that they don't show up for their court hearing. So if, you're, if your goal and your purpose is to help these individuals get into the country so that they can stay here and make a life here, then you don't like the MPP program. You don't like the fact that individuals coming in, if they have a fear, of a, a, a fear that they want to express or, or apply for asylum, if they're made to wait in Mexico, a lot of those individuals are giving up uh, because they know what we do know is a very small percentage, about 10 percent, actually qualify for asylum. Right. So, again, trying to root out some of that fraud. And I think at the end of the day, they are aware of this. They don't like it. Uh, and they want to move to have these individuals in the interior of the country as those immigration proceedings uh, take place. Yeah, you think about the backlog for people who are legitimately seeking asylum in this country and people know how it works. You come across the board and you say you fear for your life and then they go through the process whether or not they are actually in any danger or not. I also want to talk to you too, Chad, about Nancy Pelosi calling for this 9-11 type commission to investigate what happened at the Capitol on January 6th. She says the security of the Capitol was lax. But this is her highest priority now, making sure it is secure. Do you think this 9-11 style commission will accomplish anything? Well, I think that's yet to be seen. I know she also has another review. Uh, I believe she brought in a former general uh, from the military to do a review. I would say let's wait on that review uh, before if you need to, before knowing if we need to put together a 9-11 style commission on, on what occurred on January the 6th. Uh, obviously, what we know thus far is that Capitol Police, if they had a plan in place, did not follow that plan. I don't know that you need a full-scale commission to understand what national, uh, what the Capitol Police did and did not do. Uh, I think through that review that's already ongoing, if it turns up another a number of other concerns, then you can certainly have the discussion about a larger style commission. Hmm. Uh, but I would be uh, a little hesitant about a, a full scale commission at this time. I think you can get to the root causes of what occurred on January the 6th as far as a security breakdown at the Capitol very quickly without uh, without initiating 
a, a large commission which takes time and effort to stand up. Yeah, and we only have a couple seconds left, but we're showing this video now of the razor wire and the fence around the Capitol. You know, if you were currently the Homeland Security Secretary, would you recommend that that wire and fence stays up? Well, that's a that's a tough decision. I don't have all of the information and all of the the intelligence that they have right now. But what I would tell you is that some of these same individuals who are now saying that they need that fence up, they need that razor wire up, are the same individuals saying we don't need that type of physical infrastructure on the southwest border. So you can't have it both ways. What we know is that certain impedance and denial fences and walls do work yep. in strategic areas. Yep, and that is on display right now at our nation's capital. Chad, thanks so much for the time. We appreciate it. All right, thank you. Thanks for watching the Heritage Foundation's YouTube channel. With more than half a million members, we are the nation's largest conservative research and education institution. We believe the principles and ideas of the American founding are worth conserving and renewing. Please help us further our mission by subscribing to this channel and sharing our videos with your family and friends.